the panel, we're going to talk about creative agility and just to gauge what type of audience we're talking to. Is, um, is any of you guys from agencies? So a couple agencies, clients, no clients, partners, potentials, like what, what do you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> no, we just want to make sure that the con we want to make sure the content resonate and that it helps. Um, because this, so this panel we're mostly going to talk about creative agility. What that means is um, at the age of mobile first content and on social media, um, we can't be watching the same video and same ad over and over again. And how do we produce enough content for the average for and also personalized content for everybody that we're scrolling through the through feed, no one's stopped for anything anymore, no one's stopped for TV breaks anymore, so how do we produce enough content at scale that, that mean, that's meaningful for people? So this is what this panel is about. So I hope if this is not for you, you still have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> you can leave right now. <laughs> um, so just a little bit of background, who we are. So I'm from Facebook. My name is Karen, nice to meet you. Um, so I'm from the partnership team and I manage creative platform partners in EMEA. Um, so the, what the partners, have, have, do you guys know anything about the Facebook marketing partner program? Yes, no. So, two minutes. <laughs> um, so the Facebook marketing partner program is the global ecosystem of technology platform. And um, we have, I think, six or seven different specialties. The whole point is to help advertisers to either create better content, to help them buy, to help them target, to help them do everything that our Facebook native platform cannot do. Um, we have a whole team of 20-something people to work, to work with partners. And also, the, our partners always get to, they, they are the expert of our product because they we invite them in to um, try out alpha beta products so they if you go to them any of our batch partners like these guys they are the expert of our product so they if you, if you have any problems or any questions regarding our, our portfolio products um, if you either you get in touch with us or you can get in touch with our partners who can help you um, oh yes yeah, so our specialties we have ad tech that helps you by ads, and we have small business solutions, we have community management, we have advanced onboarding, and very importantly, measurements, and creative platform partners, that's us. Um, so that's the marketing partner program. Hello, <laughs> welcome. Are you a client? Excuse Are you from client <laughs> side or the agency side? Um, I'm on the Say yes. Sorry. Are you from the what? Um, Oh, awesome. nice, me too. Welcome. <laughs> I was a designer. Um, so that's good. You, you understand. You understand what we're talking about. Well, I just got here. <laughs> <laughs> because designers endure pain, a lot of pain. But, um, but we've got these guys to help. So there's creative platform partners. We have a lot of capabilities. Um, so what, we, what our whole creative ecosystem focus on is to make your content mobile friendly for all of our ad products. So whether you have a, you have a long form video that you need to make it vertical or square or whatever form or make it into stories, there's an there's a FMP for that. Or if you want to turn your one campaign into 500 assets that's catered to everybody, like say Hunter's Boots. Is it Hunter's Boots? Um, like to serve up a different at different products at different time of the day according to different weather there's a partner for that um, if you only have still images in your library that you spend thousands and thousands of dollars on but they're not animated they're not video we have marketing partners to help you turn all of these assets into moving images so these are what creative platform partners are really good at and that's why these guys are here these are the three of our best NBA based Creative platform partners. Do you guys want to introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Jer. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Spirable. Um, and just to give you a bit of background on us, uh, we started about four years ago. 
Um, and I actually set up the business with my brother Jay. Um, and the problem that we saw back then was we were getting bombarded by generic advertising. Uh, but generic ads just aren't very relevant to you and they're not very useful. Um, so the challenge was, well, how do you turn advertising into something that's actually useful for people? Um, and the, our solution is to bring together a whole load of data and an understanding of the person or the audience together with creative assets to create millions or thousands of different videos. Every video is contextualized for that particular audience. So we're taking storytelling, combining it with smart technology and all of the data, and ending up with something that is relevant, customized, and in the moment for that particular person. But that's, you know, that's the vision. Uh, the future of advertising, and in particular, Facebook is driving a lot of this, is that the adverts you see are actually, it's helpful, it's informative, it's personalized, it's relevant. Uh, people don't scroll past it, they actually engage it. Um, and that's what we do right now, it's viral. Hi, I'm Fabian. Uh, I'm a former creative director in a digital agency and I'm the, also the founder of uh, The Source. Uh, the Source is uh, an inspiration and creation platform, platform for original snackable content. So we really focus on creativity. Uh, actually, all our tech is only about creativity. We are a creator network uh, composed of 1,000 creators around the globe, and we select those guys based on their capability to make your term stop on the smartphone. So uh, only designers that are really good at building original content on mobile, uh, whether it's stop motion, illustration, uh, something, every creative technique you can think about. Uh, and our job is to find them and to make it easy to work with them. Uh, so we partner mostly with agencies. Uh, we are really an extension to their creative teams to help them uh, craft uh, the content for mobile. And uh, we also partner in some cases with, uh, with brands. Cool. Um, I'm, I'm Johnny from a company called Shuttle Rock. Um, we're originally in New Zealand, founded company, but we're, we're global. We're in the US, Asia, and now Europe. Um, our whole focus is really helping brands with their existing assets. So we see often they'll have a lot of um, static imagery, uh, photography, print print ads, um, TV commercials. Um, we really help bring all of the usable creative assets that an advertiser has into one central platform. Um, we then make it really easy for them to kind of enhance those assets and turn them into versions that are going to work really well on social placements, whether that's stories or feed ads um, or turning static into video. So we really help take everything an advertiser has, bring it into one place, enhance it, and then our technology actually refreshes the creative in a live campaign so that the, the ads don't fatigue. So um, yeah, technology platform helping advertisers get more out of what they already have. So just to do a little bit of summary, because that was a lot of information. <laughs> and so we have three very different creative platform partners who focus on different things. Fabi and The Source, their focus, their focus is creators network where they have the capability to do very, very bespoke content. It's a large network, so you can get, it's basically like a, like a thousand freelancers at your fingertips with different styles, very distinct style creators. Whereas Spireball there, they do templated advertising they can create 500 how many i don't know how many millions assets. Millions, <laughs> millions within seconds that's what the, the uh, platform is very good at whereas johnny from the shadow out here sits kind of in between where they they're very very good at um, turning still images into and in, into animation so they're they're different um so talking about different can you guys talk a little bit about the process of how you engage your clients and how do you engage with agencies? You want to start? Yeah, yeah, I can start. <laughs> so um, we see our role really as helping the performance team, whoever that is, whether that's a media agency or a paid social team, and the creative team, whether that's um, an agency or an in-house studio, we really, we, we seek to kind of provide a platform that helps them work together more efficiently. So we're seeing more and more media teams are needing creative solutions, so often we'll help um, a media team who maybe may not understand the process of building creative or going out and producing new creative from scratch, we help them solve some common 
creative challenges um, with, with, with our solutions. Um, or if we're working with a, a, a client team or a, a brand team or a creative team, we're really helping them scale up production. So we see that brand teams are very good at setting a creative direction and coming up with a big idea and building beautiful assets that the client loves. Um, but often they struggle with the production of all of the different versions for the multiple placements and, and platforms that they're trying to run those assets um, across. So. Can you talk about your turnaround time? Yeah. Um, so, so really what we do is um, within sort of three days, we can be taking you know, um, a library of static images. So the client might, for example, have a whole lot of static images. We see often... Um, a media team might be supplied with 50 photos, but the client would like to run video um, ads on, on Instagram and Facebook. So what we do is we bring all those assets into our platform, um, and within three working days, um, we deliver what were photos back as, as 6 to 15 second video, um, ready to place in those, those ads. So Fabian has a very different engagement model. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can you talk about that? It's not taking three days, uh, <laughs> maybe one week or two, uh, because it's about building original content. That can actually be served in your platforms afterwards. Mm. Not so maybe we, we can work together. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, our model is to, you're going to see a demo right after that, but it's to start with inspiration. So we gather all the content from our creators and qualify them and then it's easy to search for uh, anything you need, uh, whether you're looking for uh, like uh, examples of uh, content that show a new packaging or collection of products or whatever. Uh, you can get inside and then uh, take the creator that is behind the content to hire you, basically. And then uh, we make it easy to work with him uh, from contracting, rights, uh, everything that is painful, usually. Uh, we do it, and then you, you stay focused on what is important uh, as a brand or agency, which is the message and the brand consistency, and uh, talking directly with the um, creator. And uh, all those creators are here because they know how to do, they know how to work with the clients, and they, they know how to build content that is really sold uh, mobile first. So, yeah, that's the way we work. We, we are basically an extension. To, to in-house teams or, or creative teams. Uh, so like no one can be good at everything, so you can pick uh, creators, uh, and you know that they are really selected by creative directors. So that's, that's the point. So as a technology company, what we recognize it is that technology isn't replacing creativity. Uh, we're a tech platform, but we collaborate with storytellers, the creatives, with the agencies. Um, and essentially what we allow them to do is tell a story in a new way. So technology has always enhanced storytelling. So we think about the you know, television came along, cinema came along, uh, and all that did was enhance the way you can tell a story. And now platforms like Spirable working with Facebook is enabling you to create not just one video, but a million videos, everyone's different. And, and how we do that is the creative agency come up with a big idea, uh, they turn it into a storyboard, and that storyboard they build into a template and spiral. We're hooked up to a whole load of data uh, feeds, and we pump that data through the template and create the right video at the right time for the right audience. And an example of that would be, we've just finished a campaign with Philips for their air purifier systems, and it's pollen generated video content depending on your location. So if you're in London, the pollen count is high, it's saying, hey, it's, uh, it's Tuesday, pollen count is nine today in London, uh, buy an air purifier from Philips. If you're in somewhere else, the story is different, and the video is always changing, it's always relevant to that audience in that location. And that's just one example of how a creative agency came up with a big idea for the story, and then they're using Spirable's templating technology, and the data feeds, and, and Facebook together, to create thousands of different videos that are changing constantly depending on where you open your Facebook feed. Um, and that's, you know, I think, you know, the, the future for us in terms of ways of working and process, it's about collaboration, not just the creative agency, the media agency, the client, all coming together to kind of reinvent storytelling. Okay, this is, this is, do you guys have any questions regarding to what they, they just explained? 
because it's a lot of words. So we need. <laughs> I think. I think it's time for some case studies. We need to see some work. Um. So, Jer, you brought a piece of work. Can you talk? Can you give us a little bit of background? Sure. You want to show the work first? Sometimes you can just play it, and I might be able to talk over it. Okay. Later. So this is a, a piece of work for Captain Morgan's. Um, so this is uh, running on Facebook and on Facebook Messenger. And the challenge that these guys have is to increase brand loyalty and to increase sampling of their product. So what they did through Sparable was for 50 different locations, they create localized ads. So the actual advert will have the name of the location in it. So if you're in Leeds or you're in Doncaster saying, hey, Doncaster, fancy a free Captain Morgan, so essentially that's what the story is. So you can see there just some of the locations that they're targeting. So it's localized, so you're in your feed, you see a localized ad, it's talking about your location and the fact that you can redeem uh, a voucher to get a free Captain Morgan's and, uh, and whatever your favorite uh, cocktail is. And essentially what happens is when you click on that advert, it takes you into Messenger. And now what the brand is having is a one-to-one -one conversation with the actual person, and this is the power of Messenger. CPG brand getting close to the customer. It gives you a voucher code and tells you where the nearest pub where you can redeem that in Doncaster or Leeds, wherever you are. You go in and you redeem the voucher at the bar, you get your Captain Morgan's and whatever, your favorite mixer where it is, Captain Morgan's and Coke in this case. And then you get back a personalized video straight away as soon as you redeem that. So in your messenger chat, it's going, oi oi Captain Brown, enjoy your your Captain Morgan's drink at Yates Bar or wherever you are. That's all fully automated. It's taken your surname from your messenger profile. It's taken the name of the pub, depending on wherever you redeem it. Automatically generates a little personalized video from the captain and sends it back <coughs> to your messenger. Exciting and delighting the customer, increasing brand recall, and ultimately setting an experience and a tone that is in line with the Captain Morgan's brand. So that's the sort of stuff we do with Diageo. Uh, first, the kind type stuff, chatbot generated personalized video. Uh, what's at scale? Cool. Yeah. That's great. Love that. I really, oh, and also, just so you know, they and they've entered the Captain Morgan campaign into Can Lion. So we'll find out next week whether you win. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Um, so, Fabian, you talked a bit about how you worked with agency before. Can you yes. share some example? Uh, yeah, so this, this is um, an example of an agency, a French one, which is known as uh, Gangsters. And they're working with, with uh, Naturalia, which is a French uh, organic retailer. Um, so they, they wanted to announce their, their birthday, actually. So basically, the agency access to what we call the inspirational board. So here you get 10,000 contents that are end-qualified and you can uh, get inspired and find new ideas. Oh, there's uh, something with the videos, yeah. but it's uh, going really good. It should mm. be better. Uh, so, and... Uh, it's horrible, sorry. <laughs> and uh, they, they found uh, this concept of a um, gold bear machine uh, stuff and basically they hired a creator making him work on a storyboard about this concept. And in uh, one week and a half, they got uh, an Instagram story, uh, everything handmade uh, by the creator uh, using their product. And uh, actually, this is the result, which is really nicer uh, in real time. Uh, and yeah, that illustrates how it works. You get inspired. You see all these contents that we that we that we call on Instagram, and then when you find uh, ideas, uh, you can find the creator that is perfectly uh, suitable for your needs, and ask him uh, directly to 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 work on this topic, and basically the platforms and everything. So you are directly in touch with with him. That's uh, we are quite a facilitator uh, between uh, creators and. So it's almost like a Pinterest board, but you get to hire yeah. the person that created the work. Um, yeah, it's like a, like a, if Pinterest and Instagram had a baby together. Uh, we, we, we try to keep it really qualitative, so we have 10,000 contents uh, for now. Uh, should be slightly more in the months coming because everything is hand qualified, so you don't 
get a bunch of content you have to look for, you know everything is quality and uh, so it saves you a lot of time. I don't know if you go to Behance or some, some stuff like this to find designers, it's, uh, it's quite a mess, you spend hours uh, looking at it. So we have done the job and uh, we have selected them only for their mobile first capabilities. And you guys are also starting a new kid, new story capability as well, right? Yeah, yeah, we are focusing on stories right now. So we actually asked our community to to put some stories on the profile. So I think in one month and a half, we're gonna have two hundred or three hundred examples of really good stories <coughs> to get inspired again. Uh, so yeah, our idea is really to become a inspirational place. Uh, just to see what is the best uh, in the uh, M-Craft videos. Okay, thank you, Fabian. <laughs> um, so, Johnny, yeah, are you I can, ready for I'm ready, yeah, I can talk through it. Show some work. Um, so, this is a really good example of a small business. They're a scooter sharing company in Barcelona. And like a lot of companies, they really struggle to come up with fresh new content to kind of market their video. So what we do with these guys is using our technology, they aggregate all of the experiences that people are having around Barcelona with their product. So any hashtag or mention of the brand is automatically um, gathered by our platform. And then it's compiled along with brand generated assets or statics. So all of the user generated content, all of the templates and all of the designs that are coming out of Eculture's um, in-house creative team are then turned into a flow of video creative that's then automatically refreshed in their campaigns. So in a way you've got the customers marketing the brand through shared experiences. Um, those statics are turned into videos and then they're automatically refreshed in the campaign so that we maintain performance. Um, and with this client we were able to lower their cost per install by about 43%. Um, as opposed to them manually running these campaigns. Okay, great. Thank you. Are you guys inspired by any of the case studies? No? Yes. yes. <laughs> Pumped. That's the spirit. Pumped. <laughs> yes, I know it's the end of the day. So let's spice it up a little bit. So like everything we've heard so far has really, it's been really positive. What has been the pain point of working with clients or agencies? Yeah, I can start. So I think um, if, you, if you look at the way media is always operated, you've had um, people running, buying media in one room, and you've had people building creative in another room. And so you sort of had the luxury where you were able to um, take a long time, produce a small number of really beautiful, really expensive assets, ship them off to the creative agency or the publisher, and they would be run um, in, in the campaign, and we'd sort of get the results back in however long it took. I guess today, um, with platforms like Facebook and Instagram, it's more of an always-on medium. So we no longer have the luxury where creative teams and media teams can kind of exist in silos. So we find often media teams um, know creative is a real problem and a real requirement, and it's sort of the number one thing they're, they're hunting for to boost their campaign performance, but they don't do media, they don't do creative, right? It's a different business model. They don't talk about billable hours and creative directors. That's sort of always been the creative team's job. <laughs> and then likewise, creative teams who used to be able to, you know, used to need to produce four, five, six pieces of content are now expected to produce, you know, 4,000 pieces of content with probably the same budget. So it creates a lot of pressures around yeah, how to scale up production and how to deliver more, more, more outputs with the same budget, without kind of compromising quality. Um, so I think you know often there's a real need to get these two teams working to, together, um, and I think really technology is the enabler uh, um, that that's going to enable that to happen. Thank you, Fabia. You said everything. Sorry. <laughs> no. no, I think. Uh, you're right, and uh, another pain for uh, pain, like maybe advertiser uh, need again, even if you guys are telling them every day, uh, need to understand that uh, it's really uh, important to build content, especially for mobile. And just that simple thing, mm -hmm. I think, uh, it's still we still have to convince a little bit on this. Uh, so yeah, that's the main point. I think the only thing I'd add to that is. Um, 
the end the end user, the end customer's expectation is changing all the time. Um, so certainly what worked back in the day when it was TVCs, mm. that certainly doesn't work today. But even what worked a couple of years ago mm. doesn't necessarily work today. Um, attention spans are really short. Uh, people who just you need come stop and content. How do you do that? And the way people consume content, not just on different devices and on different platforms, but at different times of the day, um, depending on whether it's the morning or whether they're sat on the sofa at home in the evening, is different. So there's a whole load of new dynamics, um, and yeah, just getting, you know, keeping up with the pace of change. I think for clients is a challenge, um, and I think uh, quite often they lean on partners like us to collaborate and actually bring them some of the learnings um, from working on platforms like Facebook, what works, they want to know. Um, so getting involved early in the collaboration and in that process about, okay, it's not about creating one or two or even five pieces of content, it's about creating the optimal piece of content depending on whatever the platform audience or time of the day is, getting that message across is, the, um, is one of the new challenges. So that leads us perfectly to our next question. Instagram story. So Instagram story is the next new thing everybody's into. Um, so what are the, is there any nuances you notice that's different from like user behavior or performance or creative? Mm. How is it different from feeds? I'd say just to pick up, sorry guys, just to pick up another say <laughs> the first thing is the attention span thing, like I said, super short on Instagram mm. stories. Uh, and the content is short lived. That's mm. the vibe. The vibe is it's short lived. Um, so if you're producing adverts, you should try and stick with the vibe and stuff that's relevant right now. So if sunny outside, Kim's uh, recipe or something like that might work. Um, and not just that same old advert running on Instagram stories over and over again. I don't even know if we can run Instagram stories over and over again. Yeah, I think this is a really key point is that we talk a lot about creative fatigue. I think fatigue is almost built into stories uh, by the very nature that they're designed to be 24 hours or less. So, you know, if you've got one TV commercial cut down to a, a, a stories format and you just keep hounding people with that day after day, it's, it's going to get old really, really fast. Um, and then I think the other simple but obvious thing is that, the, you know, it's vertical in nature. So building assets that actually are formatted for uh, 9 to 16 or for that vertical format um, you know, um, first is, is super important. So not just taking a TV spot or a, a feed ad from Facebook and Instagram and expecting that to work um, in the stories placement. So yeah, formatting it and you need a lot more, you need uh, a lot more assets to t keep the creative fresh. Oh, um from a creative point of view, I think uh, I'm pretty excited about stories, just to begin, because it reminds me of uh, Vine back in the days. Mm -hmm. Like Vine bought a new format, it was six seconds looping videos. And all a bunch of creators uh, went into this format and bought uh, new ways of uh, creating videos, actually. It was a totally new things, uh, how, how to make it loop, etc. And I think quite the same with stories. I think we are like 10% of what we can do, creatively speaking. Uh, it's like a blank space where creative, creative people can write uh, new ways of expressing brands, uh, brands messages. Mm -hmm. So that's quite quite exciting. And that's why we run this internal competition uh, among our creators, like uh, try to invent new things uh, because it's totally new usage. Also, there are a lot of things to play with for Instagram stories. This is, this is the product side of me talking. <laughs> <laughs> we have story school and also because for stories, it's, it's very it's native. So you can play with, you can play a lot with it, with the stickers and with the different GIF. And it's, it's actually really fun. So I encourage all of you guys, if, even if you're not advertising on on Instagram story, I do encourage you to play with it more because you can get pretty, pretty creative on it. Um, mm. And it only lives for a day. Worst comes to worst, delete it. It doesn't hurt. Um, <laughs> Facebook also offers story school. So um, sign up for story school at some, at some point. It's a lot of fun. You get to learn all these hidden features, but that's going on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
you guys talked a lot about personalization and scalable motion design stories and and all of this so for say for 2018 to 19 what excites you the most yeah i think the thing that really excites me is the combination of like authentic content so you think about um, the nature of the stories platform you've got you know real people taking photos of products that they enjoy in their experience and i guess user-generated content is sort of a buzzword it's been around for a long time but i think with the stories platform for the first time you've got millions of creators billions of creators producing uh, video content which is really gold for for advertisers so i think if you combine authentic experiential content um, with the stories format for advertising it's, a, it's a, a really exciting medium for for advertisers to to get right it does have some challenges in terms of you know, making that content feel authentic or, or actually be <laughs> authentic in the first place and then also having enough of that content to, to really make it work and keep it fresh. But I think, yeah, um, authentic content plus stories is, is really exciting for me personally. Uh, yeah, I, what, what is it? it, it it's, a, it's a question for me. Uh, I'm wondering what would be the perfect organization between the agency, the agency and the client to, to get these uh, 4,000 contents you were talking mm. about uh, done. Actually, uh, I think we haven't found it yet. Uh, we're discussing with clients like Nestle, L'Oreal, or Turner. They are building internal studios, they are trying stuff, but nothing really, really good for now. Mm. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to find the solution. Uh, mm. What will be the, the link between creative agencies, media buying agencies, clients, and platforms like us, I think we might be a solution. Uh, so, yeah, that's the answer I would like to know. Exciting stuff. Um, I think one of the things that we're very excited about is more in the moment content. Um, there's a World Cup about to kick off. Imagine the adverts you see, they're changing as, as somebody scores a goal. Um, that can, that's what the technology is there now to do that. Um, so, you know, the days, like we've, we've spoken a lot about kind of, you know, the TVC and all that, but even the days of creating, you know, one piece of um, uh, a Facebook advert and just leaving a run for eight weeks. Um, you know, these guys are into monitoring performance and refreshing at the right time. But that just means you need more creative. Um, and I think bringing in elements of real time in the moment uh, information that's useful to people, whether it's World Cup football scores or whether it's uh, traffic information or weather information or pollen or pollution or anything else, um, that makes it more exciting, more useful. Um, so adding that element to personalization and things like authentic user-generated content, it gives you a, a toolbox to create stories that you couldn't do before. So that's exciting. Okay. That all sounds really exciting. So question kind of linked back to that. When is the best time for a client or agency to engage you guys? Like during planning, because there's that's part of it, right? For a lot of a lot of a lot of time, it's when to bring partners in or when to bring a vendor, and you don't want to bring them in too early. If if things don't work out, then it wastes everybody's time. So, like in your experience, when is the best time to get involved with the camp with a new campaign? Uh, so for the source, there are two times I think. Uh, at the very beginning, when uh, an agency is thinking about uh, what can I propose to my clients, uh, so uh, like uh, yesterday, an agency asked us, I'm, I'm looking for a new way to express this brand on social media. Uh, so they went to, to the inspirational board and tried to get uh, examples and build their own board. Uh, that's the first thing, and then it's in the execution part. Like uh, they have an ID. Uh, it always starts with an ID from the agency, usually, even if some are asking IDs to the creators. It works as well. Uh, but uh, and then uh, okay, who, who can execute it? And then they find it. So two phases. What's usually the turnaround time for a bespoke piece of content? It really depends on the creative technique that is used. What about the one that you just showed for the natural? Was one we can have, okay. but depends if uh, like, uh, we had one uh, last month for Mini, the car company, and then the, the weather was not good, so it took one month to shoot. That depends. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, as simple as that. Yeah. Um, I, I think yeah, we uh, 
by choice, we'd like to get involved right at the start. Um, I think new platforms, you can bring ideas that, uh, and help the client um, plan it properly and get it right up front. So that would always be our preference. How long does it usually take to get a campaign up and running? We always say we can move as quickly as the, as the clients can. Um, but, you know, something like uh, the Philips one I described, I think it was two weeks from uh, the initial <coughs> conversation to actually go live, something like that, a few weeks. What about the Captain Morgan? How long? That was a bit more involved because a chatbot had to be built for it. Yeah. So there was a build. Um, so that's, that's a slightly different story. Plus, it was an, an added agency uh, to build the, the mm -hmm. chatbot on board. So that was, you know, that was probably, I don't know, six to eight weeks, something like that. Um, but yeah, it's a bit like what these guys said. Depends on the brief and the mm -hmm. complexity of it. Uh, but a lot of the stuff now has been standardized because it's a new normal. Um, and that is, you know, it can move very quick, a week, two weeks, something like that. Yeah, and I think for us, we're, we don't so much work on specific briefs or projects. We're sort of an always on platform. So our role is a little bit different. We look at clients that are spending money on ads um, all day, every day, and they want to get an, a, an improvement in the performance of those ads. So our role is really to I look at the campaigns the client is running and find ways to improve the flow of creative into those ads so that we get a, an uplift. So um, two examples of how we would work with a client. One would be we would pick a campaign they were running where fatigue was maybe an issue and we would help take all of their existing assets that they have and just automate the refresh of creative and that's a very quick process. We integrate with their ad account, we create a queue of their, their assets and we start refreshing um, the next day. So that's basically an instant win. Um, and then the other one is our instant video which turns static into video. Um, so basically give us some statics and we'll give you some videos and that, and that takes three days to, to turn around um, and introduce into the campaign. Can you talk a little bit more the, about the approval process? How, like, whether? Yeah. So there's two two levels of approval. So, um, first of all, a client will load approved assets into our platform. So we only work with approved assets. Um, so this can be signed off photos, um, signed off videos, you know, brand guidelines, fonts, all of those sorts of things. So we get all the approved assets in up front, um, and then through our platform, um, we take uh, enhancement requests so if you want to turn this photo into a video you submit it and then it is delivered back to you through the platform of the video um, and then you get two rounds of revisions on, on that so um, you, yeah you, you provide approved assets um, you review um, the assets as they're produced and then you also um, have the ability to decide which assets go into which campaign that, that you're running so there's sort of three levels of approval and sometimes different people are managing each one. Thank you. Question regarding how they work or when to engage them? Yes? Three impressive case studies. Do you also dare to measure the customer acquisition cost and their lifetime value and uh, that compared to regular campaigns? Is there a dramatic difference if they're highly tailored and, and customized? Mm. So for, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. Uh, for us personally, that is our number one focus. So. We, the creativity is incredibly important and we, we are trying to really link creative to performance but our number one success measure is performance so um, if we're not improving on an ongoing basis that lowering the cost per acquisition or uh, improving click through rates then we get fired basically <laughs> so um, that is our objective we know that if you have more, more assets um, your content is going to be more relevant we know that video content is typically more engaging, um, and we know if you refresh your creative, you're, you're going to avoid fatigue in your in your creative. So, so our role really is to improve um, ROI first. Yeah. Just add to that, A/B testing everything um, <coughs> to work out the ROI over control. Um, it's the uh, like John you said um, in today's world, um, it's all about performance. Um, so setting up, you know, creative split tests, this sort of stuff, um, and Facebook give you the tools to do that now, um, and you can get a clear measure of, um, you know, what, depending on the object objectives of the campaign, the measurements would be different, but you can measure. Uh, especially to Johnny, but I think all of you guys could try to answer me this. 
So uh, at Shadowrun, you mentioned a platform yeah. uh, where people can submit the approved assets mm -hmm. and set. But is it uh, fully outlated or does it have some sort of human interaction yeah. on the back end of it? Yeah, it's a, super, it's a really important question, yeah. I think, because in a way we sit between um, these these two. So I think Fabian's obviously got a, a platform, but a lot of human creativity is coming together. Um, whereas I know Spirable is really using technology and automation to deliver large volumes of, of creative. Our, our one's a little bit, in a way, we, we're anything that can be automated, we automate. So if you think about these instant videos where we turn the static into video, there's certain tasks like cutting out every shape, um, separating out all the layers, which is very mundane, labor-intensive work that no designer really enjoys doing. So we've built technology to automate those parts, um, but we still hold on to a handcrafted output. So if we didn't have humans finishing and, and involved in um, completing the work, we get some pretty weird um, videos out the other side. So. For us, it's always a mixture of human creativity, but only when it's um, it can't be automated with some sort of tech. So, so you would say you would uh, make a judgment based on every product that people submit to you, like what what sort of human yeah. interaction should it be and whatnot. Yeah, we've got a couple of different. I don't want to go into it too detailed, but we've got a couple of different. We've got very transactional products where it's literally, you know, chuck an image in, there's not a lot of creative briefing, it's a very transactional order, and this is probably 80% tech, 20% humans, if I had to pick a number, whereas if it's a little bit more complicated and there's a, a storyboard involved and a little bit more creative direction, um, then that will require humans up front, <laughs> then tech, and then quality control as well, so... Immersive, uh, demand for immersive uh, 360 formats. We start to have some. Uh, immersive 360 and VR also. Uh, we are looking for creators that are excelling in uh, virtual reality. Not easy to find. Uh, but we, are, we have some. Actually, I think we have five of them. Uh, <laughs> and they are looking for briefs. So. But yeah, we had, we had uh, I think, two briefs. Not so much. It's coming. Yeah, and our uh, so we have a sort of an innovation team are always looking at what's next, but there's always, as you know, a delay between something appearing to be really important and then practically it being used by an ad an advertiser. So, um, you know, we're looking at augmented reality. We're looking at more 360 immersive type stuff, but we haven't actually brought that to market for a, a client yet. So. The partnership in general, and both for Karen and the rest of the town, is like what have how have Facebook employees helped uh, growing your companies the, the most so far? Platform is obvious, they, they provide users, but but the partnership ecosystem management what's what's important there? Um, I think, um, <laughs> That's open critique for me. Yeah. So. <laughs> you have a good case study from, from some other company, what has really, like, where you have really managed to add, where your team has really managed to add value to, to, to grow their agency? Or, or their I, I can talk a little bit to that. I think, you know, we've, we've very recently arrived in Europe. We're, we're, new, we're new to the market. Um, and I think face, the thing with Facebook is they're talking to clients every day. So we're all in the business of solving problems. And so... The Facebook team really understand the problems. Um, they understand where clients are struggling. They understand where clients um, could use improvement. So there's a lot more of sort of a matchmaking. There's an ecosystem of partners who can solve those common problems. Um, whereas if I turn up in, in Europe and I pick up the phone and I call you, you know, I call everyone in this room and I say, hey, I'm a, an interesting company from New Zealand and I want to talk to you, I'm probably not, not going to um, get a lot of your time. So. <laughs> I think what Facebook's doing a really great job at is um, working with advertisers and uncovering the common problems and challenges and then building a, a, a suite of partners who have solutions for those.
challenges. A couple of others. So the business development opportunities is the obvious one that any mm. partner would, would be the first thing that they'll see. But there's a couple of things that, uh, and Johnny's touching on. One is that kind of that uh, understanding of what the needs of the customers are. Um, and that extends to Facebook have a creative shop, um, which works with um, you know, a broad selection of their clients um, and is leading the way in, in terms of you know, thinking about how is storytelling changing, uh, what formats work. Um, so that sort of insight and knowledge is very valuable and feeds back into our product and into our platform. Um, and even then going beyond that, you know, you get access to um, product um, experts at Facebook and access to alpha and beta releases um, and programs as you go through the journey as a partner. Um, so that's going to give you, you know, uh, a look into the future. Um, you know, what formats are coming along, how can we participate now? Um, so from a business point of view, that's very valuable. I think Joanne. Yeah. And what is the process uh, for Facebook advertiser, whether it's a direct client or an agency, to engage a partner. Give them a call. Just come, <laughs> just come talk to us. Yeah. Okay, but but how do you um, how do you know what type of service that you're would be most beneficial? That is a great great question. We just finished building this new platform. Another platform <laughs> within Facebook is the marketingsolution.com, I believe. Um, yes, okay. Facebook.com, <coughs> uh, Solution Explorer. Sorry, okay. we changed it a few times. So we have Solution Explorer where um, it shows you that all the different marketing partners, all of the specialties. So creative platform is one. <coughs> if you need ad tech, if you need uh, media buying, if you need audience onboarding. And then under creative partners, I believe we have seven different capabilities. It, that includes user-generated content, um, converting still image to motion, um, optimizing your TV commercial to mobile first, and then we've got a templated solution and personalized bundling ads. And so we um, that could help, and it's got all of their contact info and some show reels on there. But if that doesn't answer your question, you can always contact one of us. Um, so we're gonna go back to these guys. So just to close up, um, tell us about your big vision for the next five years. What do you see? What What's the best scenario for you? Um, you know, obviously we started in the UK. We're London based. A um, bit like these guys, we're now operating overseas, APAC in the US. So growth, growth at a global scale is obviously the plan. But kind of beyond that, thinking a big vision is to you know be the thought leaders and around reimagining storytelling uh, because we're firm believers that when you bring old-fashioned storytelling and data together, you're going to end up with more useful content. Um, and if we can do that, I think it will enhance the experience of customers that engage with the brand, um, and it will be a great experience for everybody. Um, and the sort of technologies we'll be using to do that are not just templating technologies but a lot of smart AI, a lot of machine learning. So we're always learning and optimizing the story for each and every day. Uh, <coughs> the, the big vision is to be, is to be part of this uh, new organization about producing content. Like, uh, I'd, li I'd like the tools to be part of the content factories uh, in the future, um, because I know there will be all content factories linked to creative agencies and that's where we want to be so really work hand in hand with agencies uh, to, to, to extend their capabilities so and obviously want to go go in the US go everywhere <laughs> but uh, but yeah before crack the new model of creating content that would be our, our vision our bet yeah, and I'd add to that really. I think um, all of us as Facebook partners and, and as part of this ecosystem, there's kind of a recognition that um, the way in which content has been created and published doesn't really work today. So there's sort of a lot of work going into how to build a new infrastructure where you have creative talent, you have media specialists um, and publishers working together and, and somehow the client actually understanding and being in control of that process. So 
you know, our vision is really to be a critical part of that the infrastructure um, that is used to build and activate creative um, in the future. Thank you. That is great. Um, so that's all for the panel. <laughs> you get five minutes of your life back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did that help at all? Are you guys good? Um, if you have any questions, these three guys are available for chat outside with the drinks. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.